Hello Beauty News family! Welcome to Beauty News. This is the 28th of August edition. We're going to be talking about new release beauty products. Uh, no updates. No we don't updates. have any. It's been an interesting year for no updates, hasn't it Kat? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like past years we've almost had, and we used to do update we episodes. We used to do a Monday episode that was just updates and we would have two like one hour plus episodes a week of yeah. beauty news. Yeah, whereas we just like, not only have we cut out the shit, but we also like, we don't, we don't feed into the month or two month long sneak peeks anymore. I we don't put up for with that, that shit. shit. <laughs> nah. nah, fuck that. Fuck We're in that. lockdown and we still don't have time for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> we, we literally have all the time in the world to do whatever we want yeah. and we don't have time for that shit. Agreed. All right. All right. We're going to start with Alamar Cosmetics. This is the Spanglish collection. So it looks like it consists of a pressed pigment palette. This is 28 uh, US dollars and it contains six shades, eight shades, sorry. There's a whole bunch there. You've got uh, an intense gold peach metallic with gold and green reflex, burgundy metallic with hot pink reflex, matte light pink, a burnt orange, a lavender shimmer. There's a purple metallic base with blue and green multicolor reflex. Then you have the matte neutral midtone brown and a matte intense fuchsia pressed pigment. Then there is the Pero Primero Primer, 15 US dollars and the Spanglish Brush Trio. So this contains a packer brush, a crease control brush, and a detailed diffuser brush. And you can buy the whole collection for $51. We have a brush here from Beautylish. This is the Hachiko brush. So it is a collector's uh, special edition piece and it features Hachiko and his owner on one side of the brush and Hachiko's statue on the other side. Now the story behind this is a Japanese man owned this dog and he would commute to work every day and the dog would meet him at the train station when he commuted home from work. So they would meet at Shibuya station. Um, and one day his owner passed away while at work and the dog returned to the train station every single day for the rest of its life for over nine years waiting for his owner. It's, it's so me, sad. I it's know. making me like... I know. Oh, it's so We've sad. We've been to the statue and, and it's, yeah, it's... Yeah, yeah. So it's at the station and it's very sweet. It's one of those really like stories that I don't think anyone could not be like... Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So like I it's think... a really really beautiful story really sad story and yeah. i think anyone who understands and has felt love can like really yeah. like have their heartstrings pulled by this especially if you're an animal person so this has had a lot of positive reception we don't have prices yes. yet but knowing this oh, it's type of release it's going to be really expensive but i think this is going to be like <sighs> at least 150 to 180 US dollars. That's going to be my guess. Yeah, they're saying it's launching exclusively on Beautylish um, on the 26th of August. So by the time you're watching this, it's already up and probably sold out. Well, yeah. depending on the price, because I know a lot of people yeah, are interested, it, yeah. but a lot of people know that the price is going to be quite high. So yeah. Um, yeah, I don't. We probably won't be able to have the price on the screen. But if you're interested, check out Beautylish. They'll keep you updated. It's yep. cute. It'd be something that I would want to buy. But also, this is something that I reckon would only be worthwhile if you had like a really fancy makeup display where you displayed like collectors pieces. Because for me, I feel like it'd be such a waste just putting this in a drawer. Yeah, I kind of. I feel that as well. Also, my issue is it's a kabuki brush and I just don't use them. I know? used to use them like crazy when I had yeah. really oily skin. I used to use a lot of pressed powder and I still do use quite a lot of pressed powder, but I don't, don't need to pack it on anymore. Yeah, um, yeah. But kabuki brushes are quite limited. It's sort of like powder or 
powder foundation or maybe bronzer and that's about it so yeah. it is a less versatile brush you're right all right next thing we've got charlotte tilbury they're expanding their pillow talk range surprise <laughs> fucking surprise of course they are of course they jesus are jesus christ i wish there was something stronger in this camp <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm surprised actually that nas haven't brought out uh, orgasm mascara that's probably next um but Somehow yeah, pillow where is talk, it, Nas? Yeah, somehow Pillow Talk is worthy of turning into a mascara. So this is the Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes Mascara. Now, here's the thing. Pillow Talk is a colour that they use yeah. in their range. So it's a colour yeah. of a lipstick that they've turned into lip gloss, blush, eyeshadow palette, you know, highlighter probably, a whole bunch of stuff they call Pillow Talk because it's referring to a nudie pink shade. How is that mm. a mascara? I have no fucking idea. Um, but no, they're saying I that the mascara's wand is unique. Um, so the brush has both a diamond bristle side and a flat side. So the diamond right. bristle, the diamond shaped side allows you to follow the curvature of your eye to give the like eye opening Bambi like effect. And the flat side, they say it loads the perfect amount of product for double lash line definition and jet black intensity. It looks like it's just a side that's sort of devoid of bristles. So it doesn't, like... Yeah, you're right. It does look like it's like got... It, mm. So when you pull it out of the wand, it's just going to have a chunk of product on there. So you chunk your product on and then turn it around and, and comb, it, comb through. it through i i'm sorry nah i don't get nah i'm not Look, interested the only thing that i like about this is the before and after looks really impressive it does it, look good and yeah. it doesn't look overly photoshopped yeah but also i like that they said beautiful before and my best lashes after so i'm glad after. that they didn't yeah. market it as being like Ew, you're Blah, ugly without mascara. Yeah. You're only pretty with yeah. the mascara. I think the before and after makes me want to try it, but that sort of grouping, yeah. grouping it on and then brushing it through, look, it could work. It could be fine. I just don't really... I've noticed brands are bringing out these, like, flat side brushes with their mascaras, and, look, they might be great, but for me it's like... It kind of makes me think of, like using a lash primer and then a mascara like i'm not about that life i can't be bothered mm. i just want my mascara to be fucking bomb no matter what area of the wand i'm using that's all i yeah. want is that too much to ask for come on Charlotte is it Tilbury. look is it to be too fair much though, <laughs> yeah to be fair if i was placing an order i and would if i needed a mascara i might try it just because i like the before and after and Thinking about it, I don't, I don't know how practical it will be, but I don't hate the idea of cl like clumping it on and then brushing it through because often yeah. I do that with mascara anyway. Like I'll chunk it on, right? Yeah, and then I'll get like a lash brush and I'll try to comb the chunks out. So if that does that in sort of like one product, it could work. Maybe might be all right with it. Yeah, yeah. But well, look, a... they're showing a mini. In this picture so i would pick up a mini to try oh yeah that's fair i'd pick up so, a mini to try as well maybe it'd be in a pack with other things maybe and then yeah maybe it would more. maybe uh but this is already out when you're watching this and it's 23 pounds we have another collection from colourpop here they are back to their old ways releasing something new every fucking week i'm already tired of it i'm just putting and, it out there <laughs> and we're already behind because we report on what came out last thursday and yep. then they no doubt by the time you're watching this we've got another collection that's just launched but we can't predict that so we're not going to talk about it no. we're always a week behind we're always chasing yep. our tail with ColourPop. we're back at it fun yes. times so this is the sunflower collection it consists of the little ray of sunshine palette so this is a nine pan palette this is like yellow and brown basically yeah. all matte ah all matte there we go okay so if you want that it's there for you uh there's two cream gel liners it looks like there's a 
brown and a yellow. Uh, there's the Soak Up The Sun Super Shock Shadow Duo. There's two ultra glossy lips. There's the Fourth Ray Beauty Glow Up Oil and the Soul Body Lemon Drop Mini Shimmering Dry Oil. Tell me, Colourpop, does that smell like lemons? Because if it does, I want it! <laughs> I think that's a fair call. I feel like yeah. if you can add a lemon scent to something, I want to try it too. I want it. I want it. I, I want can't it. imagine that it would be though, to be fair. I don't I don't think so. Um, they have a whole array of those uh, shimmering body oils or the dry oils, and they all have like a different colour, but not a different scent. They, have they the all just scent. smell like oil. Yes. Uh, this um, is an interesting collection, though. I think it, this is quite a divisive one. Um, some people are absolutely loving the palette. Other people absolutely hating the palette. I can see both yeah. sides. But, you know, if you wanted an all matte, warm, sort of nudie, orangey, yellow palette from Colourpop, there you go. You've got it. Yeah, I don't hate it. I mean, I'm not really excited by it, but it also doesn't offend me. I like the lip gloss. It looks nice. Yeah, I always like their lip glosses. All right, from Elsie Cosmetics, we have their limited edition summer collection. Uh, this has already launched by the time you're watching this. Uh, it contains chubby sticks. These are 23 US dollars each. We've got four shades. There's Seashore, Starfish, Paradise, and Flamingo. And we also have two multi-dimensional blushes. 29 US dollars. There's Pink Lagoon and Coral Reef. So this is all very sort of pearlescent, um, pearlescent white packaging. The chubby sticks are actually really beautiful shades. Two nudes, a peachy orange and like a peachy pink, I guess. Yeah. Um, very summery. They, I would use all of these, so good on them. The blushes are interesting. They have this texture to them that makes me want to just destroy them. I want to touch it so bad. <laughs> I just want to run my finger along them. There's a yeah. cool tone one and more of a warm tone one. They all have, it looks like, five different segments of different colours. Of course, this is just an effect. Like, you swirl your brush in all of it. Yes. But the effect is very, very eye-catching. So it is. They look nice. This is, looks much better than a boring normal blush. Yes, it does, for sure. Um, and that's all available now. All right, M Cosmetics. We've got another mascara. Does this one have a flat side? <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> this is the Pick Me Up Volume and Length Mascara. So it's actually a tubing and fiber mascara in one. Have we ever seen that before? I'm sure they. I'm sure there's some out there, but it doesn't like none jump out of it. Tubing mascaras and fiber mascaras. I feel like they were like five years ago the, well they were i mean hourglass just brought out their own tubing, tubing mascara. mascara formula maybe they're coming back um, and maybe they are i mean to be fair they they are good for the lashes because you literally just get them wet and then like slide it off so mm -hmm. there's no scrubbing you don't actually have to break down the mascara to remove it um but the cool thing about it is if you like are out in the rain or if you cry um and you just you know don't rub your eyelashes off you just sort of pat away your tears or anything wet it'll actually dry and reset mm. so it'll stay there like they're they're basically not waterproof because water is exactly what makes them like wash off but they're they're budge proof. They're budge proof until you want to remove them, essentially. Yeah, I think what people generally like about tubing mascaras is they don't flake as much. Yes. Yeah. Um, and they don't yeah. leave little dots. If, if you've got that issue, tubing mascaras tend to set down and they're pretty, like you said, sort of budge proof until you put warm water on them and sort of remove them. I've yeah. only ever tried a couple of tubing mascaras and I always find the removal process so weird that I just can't weird. wrap my head around it and I just don't like using it. Is it is weird. It um, is kind that, of strange. Yeah, like it's it's strange. Like I, it, is. Me, it is, it is. I'm so used to getting like an oil or a makeup remover and just melting off my mascara that 
having to get these tubes of like what feels like <laughs> plastic or something off your yeah, eyes. But also it looks really concerning because you're like, is that also my eyelashes? My li- yeah, exactly yeah. right. So something <laughs> about they still it, just on? mentally I can't, I, can't, yeah. I can't wrap my head around it. But it seems like they're coming back, which is interesting. And to be yeah. fair, I like the idea of a tubing fibre mascara because fibres are notorious for flaking off or getting in your eyes. So having a tubing mascara that sort of keeps them stuck on the eye, on the eyelashes, yeah. it's probably a really good idea. So I don't hate this. The wand looks like a spiky bristle one. It does, yes. Um, but there's no flat side. Shock Doesn't horror. appear to be. Which I don't hate. (laughs) Yeah. Look, I'm going to have to say that before and after photos, they look completely realistic. They do, yeah. But to a point where they almost look... Don't wow me. ...appealing. Yeah. (laughs) Like, it's too normal. Whereas the Charlotte Tilbury, I'm like, okay, it doesn't look fake, but it looks impressive. Like, I want that for my eyes. I want to try that. Whereas these ones, I'm like... Eh, my current yeah. mascara does that. <laughs> like, yeah. eh. so the one I'm wearing right now is doing this. It's pretty much pretty yeah. much looks like that. So yeah. um, you know, props to them for minimizing people's expectation. But um yeah, it's not not super enticing. But I pretty much everything I've tried from M Cosmetics I like, so I would yeah, I don't hate this. All right, next up we have Good Molecules, another product that they are releasing. This is the Rosewater Daily Cleansing Gel. Yes, please. Mm. So this is 12 US dollars for 120 mils. That's pretty damn good. Yeah. That's value. That's value. Yeah. So this is designed for daily use to keep your skin balanced and bright. The pH balance formula which is 5.5, cleanses skin without drying or tightening your skin. Um, And again, it has a nothing to hide ingredient list with their exact percentage um, used for each ingredient. Uh, So this is a vegan formula as well. It contains 1% rose water, which is rich in antioxidants and helps promote a bright skin tone. And it has pineapple extract to soothe skin and promote clarity. It's sulfate-free, gluten-free, fragrance-free, vegan, packaged in a recyclable glass jar. And it is available now from Beautylish. I like the idea of this. Um, Yeah, me too. I like good molecules. I think the best things in their range are their most basic things. So their basic moisturizer. Um, I feel like a basic cleanser, even though Mm -hmm. it's got little like rose water and blah, blah, blah. Um, It's a basic cleanser. It's a basic gel cleanser. Let's put it out there. Um, I reckon this might be nice. I like it. Good on them. Sometimes the simplest things are the best. Like for me personally, I feel like there are certain steps where you, you can just go sort of like cheap, but effective. And one of those steps for me is cleansing. Don't get me wrong. I will totally buy a bougie cleanser. (laughs) I love trying them as well. But when it comes to like, oh dear, I... I'm on a budget and I'm low on cleansers, I would confidently purchase something like this. And yeah. I'm sure it's effective. I'm sure it does a good job. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I want to try it. I want to try this. Okay. I like good molecules. So we've got a new nail release from Holo Taco. So these are two new nail polishes that are designed around Christine's two cats. So we've got Menchi the Cat, which is a twinkling baby pink holographic glitter polish, and Xyla the Cat, which is a rich rusted orange holographic glitter polish. So they're available now. They're $13 each, or wait for it, guys, a duo for $26. The saving. No, saving. (laughs) It is such a good saving of $0.00. and Yes. Um, love but, those zero dollar savings. Oh, I love it. It's my favorite. But they do have a portion of sales going towards um, a, a, the Pet Smart charities. So That's whatever great. that is, uh, which is good. Don't know what portion of sales, but a portion of sales. Um, yeah. You know, these are just nice holographic glitter nail polishes. You have like a almost like a lavender light 
purpley pink and a sort of burnt orangey color. And um, I think, look, we have so many times poo-pooed brand owners making collections about their pets. So we've poo-pooed Jared and his dog. Um, and mm -hmm. I think recently there was another one that were like, what the fuck? I don't remember what that was for, but whatever. Um, but I think this one makes sense because since she has her own channel and her cats are featured quite heavily on her channel, people yeah. that are buying this I have a connection to her pets. It's not like a brand owner that is random that you don't know much about their life and all of a sudden they're like, I love my dog. And you're like, I don't give a fuck about yeah. your dog. Whereas in this instance, people give a fuck about her cats because they're familiar with Absolutely. her cats. So I think yeah. I an feel influencer like... brand and just a random brand, it's a different scenario. People who actually have a familiarity with her pets. So yeah. I think this is cute. So... Yep, go. Sorry. One of the um, one of the things that we talked about last week was Kim Kardashian and that's right, and her friend, and her friend whose name has Allison, escaped me. Maybe that's it. It is Allison. That's right. It's Allison. But like, I don't know who Allison is. I didn't know who Jared's dog was until he. Well, no, that's a lie. I had seen pictures of him, but I actively avoided them. <laughs> But the thing about the thing about um, Menchi and Zyla is they're in every video. Yeah, you literally can't watch one of her videos without seeing or getting a cat reference. So yeah. I think this is appropriate. I think the colors are really nice. One day I will try Holo Taco, but I'm waiting for shipping prices and times to go down. Yeah. Look, one thing I have to say about uh, Christine, she takes a good macro nail polish photo. I think Hi, one reason why she's so successful, besides the fact she's quite humorous and that sort of sparked her channel, um, she can cap like capture holographic on camera like nobody's business. Because it's yep. very hard to capture holographic and glitter at its fullest potential. And she's really good at doing that. So these look yep. really tempting. All right, we've got some new highlighters from, is it Juno, the Juno Co, Juno and Co? I call it Juno and Co. I call it Juno and Co as well, but apparently their Instagram handle is the Juno Co. And they're saying that they're Juno Moonbeam highlighters. Okay, yeah. Whatever, they're new highlighters. Um, so yeah. the shades are, Romance, which is the perfect shade of pink, giving your high points a warm and flush glow. And then Glisten, which is a gleaming golden shade, giving you the perfect sun-kissed glow. They're very, very, very basic champagne, like a champagne yellow and a champagne pink. Very, very basic. But what I like about it, they say it's ultra lightweight formula. Good, you don't want a heavy highlighter. It looks like shit. No. Um, it says that it provides a sensational, airy and luminous glow. Good, because you don't want something to be a heavy piece of shit on your face. And it's <laughs> a perfect size for on the go. Now, what I like about this is you can see on the screen that they're not super large. I don't know what how many grams mm. they contain, but they almost look like they're at least half the size, maybe a third of the size of a lot of highlighters on the market. And that's yeah. all the highlighter you need. Oh, yeah. So I like that you they've done that. You don't need any more than that. <laughs> no, that will last you everyday use. It will last you the better part of a year, if not longer. So you don't need more than that. Yes, So I will. appreciate that, like, less is more. So good mm -hmm. on them. Okay, we have Kylie's next collection. This is the Sailor Summer Collection, and it um, has a, a new product or two new products. One is makeup and one are, is lashes. Mm. Um, so this is launching August 31st, 3 p.m. PST at Kylie Cosmetics. The products are the Matte Lip Kit in Kiss Me Sailor, it's $29. The High Gloss in Private Island, which is $16. Lashes in Shady, these are $18. The Shadow Stick Duo. This is $18. This is a new product. It is um, a cream eyeshadow stick. So this is basically a gold and a bronze 
duo. Then there is the Sailor palette. This is $44 or you can get the bundle for $115. Yeah, this is an interesting one. Um, look, I've seen a lot of people talk about that, you know, well, here we go again with nude palettes with a pop of blue. Um, mm. I think for the theme, the pop of blue and it's the pop of red sort yeah. of makes sense. Yeah. So I'm okay with that. Um, I think the lip, like the lip kit, the color is a really nice sort of cool toned mauve nude, which I think is really pretty. Um, a lot of people either love or hate the packaging design. So yeah. if you're listening to this on a podcast, pretty much it's got a cartoon version of uh, Kylie with like pinup sort of imagery, pinup sort of yeah. sailor imagery. And, you know, yeah, it's very self-indulgent. Her whole brand <laughs> yes. is. We've her whole seen brand this. is. Her whole brand yeah. is. Um, yeah. So I, I, this is not something that I am shocked and appalled by by any means. I'm like, yeah, this is... This is Kylie. This is Kylie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the colors, you know, they're not groundbreaking. I don't need a red lip gloss to save my life. I don't need the palette. I don't need anything here. But it does suit the nautical theme, which, you know, fine. Yeah, I think so. Is, I summer, don't... Is, is this really late for a summer collection? Oh, yeah. I don't even know what they're doing over there. Isn't it? I have no idea. Nearly all. Hun. Yes, it is. It's going to be spring for us in a few days. Yeah, we've got what a couple you of days. Which... We literally have a couple of days. Well, the weather doesn't turn on like that, but I'm fi- we have a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping it, does. it does. Let's just put it out there. But yeah, this is well, late for a summer collection. We have had some spring-like days here in Victoria, which has been nice. But yeah, yeah, I agree. This is late for a summer collection. This is more, I'm actually kind of not mad that brands have been forced to release collections late because it means that we are getting them in a transitioning time where it's a really good time for us to purchase them. That's true. So, cause just yeah, saying. we're just coming out of winter and I'm going to say, just looking at these swatches, those two uh, cream eyeshadows. Yeah. Very pretty shades. They do. They, yeah, they are. They're nice shades. But these are really and nice shades for like, I can imagine a wash of color, blending it out, bit of a bronzy skin, um, mm-hmm. lip gloss, and you, you know, summery dress, good to go. Yeah. So yeah, right now we're bogged down in, in winter and we're like, it's cold and it's shit. So, um, yeah. yeah, I'm glad that we're starting to see these release and we're like, we see warm weather on the horizon. We <laughs> yeah. actually use this It's stuff. coming for us. Yeah. But I will say, I feel like this colour story will also very, very, very easily transition into autumn for people in the States. Yeah, and, so, win- and winter. It's pretty much, it's sort of one of yeah, those classic, yeah. you know, nude lip or red collection. lip nude eyes yeah. with a pop of blue or red like it's 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 pretty typical it's nothing yeah. groundbreaking that's for sure all right we've got a new collection from melt cosmetics well it's a new product really uh mm. they've revealed their upcoming royal blush duos so these are supposed to be luminous multi-use revolutionary new blush duo duos in, our, in their coveted skin perfecting digital dust formula. So digital dust were highlighters and now yes. they've just brought them out in a blush tone in a duo pan. Um, and then they have a sort of bee inspired theme to them. So they look kind of cool. Um, they're just in normal sort of honey colored compacts, but yeah. they have um the imprint on the pan looks like a like a honeycomb and they've got a bee imprint as well which is kind of cool but there's three different shades yep they look awesome they They look fucking bang on i love it i think they did a great job i think melt are really good with they must have a really good manufacturer for their packaging and their um like designing because they can make mm. a, a boring product look really impressive with the packaging. Melt are very good yep. at that. So they've got three shades that are coming soon. There's Buzzkill, which is a coral nectar and also a peach champagne. 
Then there's queen bee, which is a warm bronze and a honey gold. And then there's raw honey, which is a mauve bronze and a pink beige. So these are coming soon to Melt Cosmetics, 39 US dollars each, or you can get the bundle of three for $125. In that bundle, you also get a mirror and a bag. So it's not just the three duos. Now, one thing I do like about this is they do have un different undertones and they have um, sort of lighter ones and deeper ones. So um, it does cater to different skin tones. Look, I haven't tried this formula, so I don't know how good it will be for a blush, but I do like luminescent sort of blush. So I'm not hating this, but the price tag is a bit cringe. Yeah, yeah. There is a lot about this that makes me want to purchase it, but yeah, they're too expensive for me. I don't wear blush often enough to justify this. Um, Melt, Melt obviously have a, an amazing designer on their mm. team who just, they know what they're doing. They should get a think promotion. That, Oh, fuck yeah, they should get a promotion. Um, because that, like, this will sell itself. I don't think people will even care what the formula is like. People will buy this. It makes me think back to their last collection with the, the twin palettes. Mm -hmm. Where you put them together and it yeah. had that beautiful sugar skull. I personally don't, I'm not a huge fan of Melt's eyeshadow palette or eyeshadow formula. Um, but when I saw that, the visuals of those palettes, I was like, mm, pray for me, Jesus, because I need, I need your guidance and your assistance with not purchasing these palettes that I will never use. Can I say though, I agree. Like I didn't buy them because they're in shade stories that I just would not get any use out of, but I had heard really good things about those palettes, like the formula of them. Whereas yeah. other palettes I've used from them, it's hit or miss. So yeah. Um, yeah, I think these could be really nice. I think it's a smart move getting into sort of luminous blushes. Um, I did, I think we did predict earlier this year that I thought 2020 was gonna be the year of the blush. And we have mm -hmm. seen a lot of new blush formulas come out. Um, yeah. And I still feel like there's a lot more to come, but um, yeah, I think this is a smart release. They don't, look, they haven't done blush as well in the past. They released with their, that neon collection, they released a couple of split pan blushes that were yes. absolutely bagged out online. <laughs> like the reviews were horrible. So yeah. that scares me a little bit for these yeah. because they were also shimmery blushes. One yes. was like purple and it just looked like crap on the face. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I'm a little bit reluctant to spend 39 US dollars to try this, but yeah, I'm, me too. I'm, I'm keen to look out for reviews because if they made a much better formula, I'd, you know, you know, next time I order from them, I might be on your radar. Yeah. 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 Um, speaking of blushes, Menagerie mm. Cosmetics has um, released a blush palette. So this is the Arthurine blush palette volume one. So I'm sure we will see more of these. Um, the packaging of this is just adorbs. Yeah, it's super cute. <laughs> it's so cute. It's so cute. It's got a bear. He's got flowers in his hair. I'm, I'm assuming, look, I'm calling it a boy. Could be it's, a girl. It, it could be. Um, and the bear is holding a stick with berries on it. It's very cute. The colours on the outside of the palette somewhat represent what you find inside the palette. So you've got nine pans. Uh, looks like they're all matte. Yeah. And it's going to be available for pre-order on August 29th. 12 p.m. PST. It's going to be 54 US dollars. So that's six dollars per pan um, or you can pick up your favorite shades in the magnetic singles for $10 each um, which I think is fantastic it's a vegan um, and I personally I don't know why this is happening to me but I like it I like the color story this has a really good array of shades in it you've got like sort of yellowy brownie orange you've got orangey shades you've got peachy shades purpley shades pink red 
I just feel like this is a really good balance of blush shades. Not like, here's six shades of pink and three other shades of something. Yeah, I, I think they did a good job with balancing the colours. I would consider this more of a makeup artist product though because yeah. no one person needs this Can't amount of blush. All of them. No. Um, pretty much for multiple reasons. One, a lot of these tones don't suit everyone. If you're neutral and, and yeah. you like playing with different blush colours, you'll love this. But if you have cooler toned skin or warmer toned skin, you'll only really use half of these shades. Um, yeah. Or also, if you are super fair, there's yeah. going to be shades here you can't wear. If you are, super you know, deep. medium or super deep, that like you know, it's not. It's a great idea. The concept is cool, but it makes it pretty much a pro product. Like yeah, uh, like you said, unless you're doing makeup on all sorts of different skin tones. Um, you can't possibly use all of this. And you shouldn't be sharing makeup. Yeah. So don't be buying this and being like, I share it with my friends. No, it's not. It's not. No. What I'm going to... I'm going to use this on Tuesdays and Thursdays and you can get it yeah. on Mondays and Wednesdays. Like, it doesn't make <laughs> Come sense. Come pick up your blush palette for the weekend. Yeah. It's <laughs> no. Whatever. So, but I, I think also the quantity of blush you get in this. It's if you've lot. ever tried to pan a blush or a blush palette... It mm -hmm. takes years. So mm -hmm. for me, um, yeah, again, I think this is very pro, um, but I really like that you can buy the shades individually. I think the shame yeah. is, though, that the palette is so cute that you sort of oh, want... Isn't it? I would have, I would have preferred this to be maybe a four-pan palette that you buy the individual shades from a selection of a dozen and you can swap yeah, them in and have, that would have been great it would have been nice to see the nine in these shades because you're right they've got a really nice balance and you can particularly see it in the swatch photo that it goes from that yellowy murky color through to the nudes the peaches the pinks the reds um it, the, there's cool tone pinks warm tone pinks you can see there's a really good color story here there's purpley shades so i think it would have been cool to have this mirror image that with shimmers so you have you double the amount oh, yeah. and then all you need to do is have that cute bear on a four pan palette and people can buy and fill their own palette i think that would have been a much better idea um but like you they've done a pro palette of matte blushes well yeah and that packaging's so cute it's so cute all right, we've got a new foundation release from NARS. This is the Soft Matte Complete Foundation. Sounds like something I really want to try. I know. Um, <laughs> when I read this, I was like, God damn, it sounds so nice. Well, Hayley, to be fair, you're nearly off your medication. I know. We I'm don't curious. know what's we don't know what's gonna happen. If you're gonna stay dry or if you're gonna your oils are gonna come back and if they I do know. come back, we're celebrating with uh, this foundation. With this. this foundation gives full natural looking matte coverage for up to 16 hours, which is good. It's humidity mm -hmm. proof, transfer proof, and sweat proof. Um, it's formulated with microalgae and bio hyaluronic acid to help absorb excess sebum. Um, while keeping the skin hydrated. It also contains oil absorbing powders that create a smooth second skin finish. So it's launching on the 1st of September. It'll be 40 US dollars on NARS and Sephora. And it comes in a bunch of shades. Not the, like it's a pretty wide range, but it could be better. Let's just say they mm. could have filled up that deeper arm. Let's just say they should have done that. So it's got 34 shades. I reckon they should have made it a nice even 40 and added a few more deep shades in there. Yeah, I um, But it totally does sound agree. like a really nice foundation if you like a matte finish. The thing that confuses me a little bit though, you don't mm. often hear full natural looking matte. Full yeah, coverage I know. and natural looking and matte. Yeah. They don't often... It's yeah, hard they to don't a, often a go together. Looking... No. So I'm curious. I'd love to get a sample of this and try it out. Look... I'm tempted. <laughs> okay, something that I definitely don't want. In fact, I don't even want to talk about this. I feel like this is such a damn waste of space. It's a waste of my time, which I've got plenty of, but I still don't want to waste it on this crap from Agreed. Ofra Cosmetics. 
Agree. This is the liquid to baked palette called Glamour Glitch. How many fucking glitch palettes have they released? Riddle me this. Oh. I feel like every time we talk about Ofra, it's like some sort of glitch. You know what? They're living in a glitch. They just keep doing the same fucking shit. My question is, did their last glitch palette actually sell so well that they needed to make a second one? No. No. There's no... You cannot convince me. Show me your no. receipts. No. Yeah, show me your show me your <laughs> stats. I'm very confused. I want to see... I want to see how much money you made off it because it it was not worthy of following this through to no, a second one. No, and, no. Um, so this is a nine pan palette. You've got like mattes and shimmers. It's quite pink peach heavy with like a mustardy yellow and a dark brown. I don't even know what what it's trying to be. It's available now at Ulta Beauty. It's twenty nine US dollars. You couldn't even pay me 29 US dollars to want to look at it. <laughs> yeah, look, the thing that's weird about this, though, is I think that the the packaging is so distractingly oh. bad that I yes. don't even want to look at the eyeshadows. I actually yeah. feel like this eyeshadow store, color story reminds me a lot of the recent Viseart ones with their sort of like okay, summer yes. releases yeah. with the pops of pink and the nudes and the this and that and the pop of sort of like mustardy and whatever i feel like that's very um brands more higher end brands are doing mm -hmm. that a lot with their small capsule color stories so this is a very trendy color story right now pinks yeah like nars did one similar to this um a little while ago yeah um, so it's it's a color story that a lot of people are buying but the like acres of space between the fucking pans i know i can just picture the little eyeshadows calling out to each other hello hello hello, 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 hello. can you hear me over there <laughs> <laughs> yes i can hear you <laughs> oh so, my god and, and then like the sort of digital sort of holographic packaging just makes it look really confused oh, if this leave was it in, in a much smaller yeah if this was in a much smaller sort of more sleek design i'm sure a lot of people would love this and the price yep. point isn't that bad offers no, very nice not. quality products so um i would have no problem buying their eyeshadows quality wise it's just the fucking bulky packaging that makes me want to use it as a door stopper so <laughs> yeah. yeah i i i'm passing on this but they really need to up their packaging game they need to get some tips from melt yeah, that I was literally just gonna say that they need to like ring up Melt and be like SOS, SOS, iceberg ahead, like yeah, sort we're tanking it the, the fuck brand. Out. We need your help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, help. We're sinking. All right, so we're on to our last thing of the week, and this is from mm -hmm. Too Faced. Uh, they're launching their new pumpkin spice eyeshadow palette and melted matte lipstick. So. This was first seen on HSN, so they're shopping the shopping networks, um, and it was a set that was available for 70 US dollars. Um, it will launch elsewhere, but we just don't know mm -hmm. when. This is sort of like the exclusive preview sort of release at HSN. So we have seen... Is this palette... Yep. Is, is it different to the one that they did last year? And I think the year before and the year before and the year before. So last year they did have a pumpkin spice pack that had a big square palette with 12 eyeshadows. No, sorry, 16 eyeshadows in it. This, this pack, it was one of those sort of cardboard palettes that have the really spaced out pans. They do this kind of stuff for mm. throwaway limited edition things that they aren't going to keep permanent, right? They sort of, it's like they're Christmas packs. The really bulky cardboard packs with really little pans and that also had i think a lip gloss and a mascara in it so yeah they did they do these pumpkin spice things i think it's leading up to sort of the holiday season um yeah you know they they do it it is what it is um this year it looks a lot more permanent i don't know if it is going to be permanent but yeah. it's in their sort of permanent packaging so this reminds me a little bit of 
the peach palette, the clover palette, that sort of vibe. Yeah, they look remarkably like the holiday collection from last year and the year before where they had the gingerbread spice and extra spicy yes. palette. So it's that sort of format, that sort of color story, but it's a pumpkin spice one. So they're just, yeah. they're going from gingerbread just to pumpkin, both spicy, both very similar. Um, but you'll notice as well, the pumpkin spice melted matte is a full size and I believe it is the same color that was in their mini pack Christmas two years ago, 2018. Yeah. They had that mini pack of melted mattes and one was pumpkin spice. Annoyingly, I believe my favorites in that pack were sugar cookie and there was like a eggnog one. I think it was yeah. eggnog. Something like that. Mm -hmm. They didn't bring those back full size. They brought the one no. that I use the least. <laughs> the mm -hmm. pumpkin spice one. What the fuck, man? Um, anyway, bring out the eggnog and the uh, sugar cookie and I'll be yeah, happy. Yeah, just bring out the mini pack again. For yeah. fuck's sake, guys. I know. I like, agree. I'm just... I, for starters... That mini pack my, was really good. Yeah, it was so good. Like, my brain is literally having a stroke because I feel like I've seen this palette before and it really, it's, like, upsetting me. Um, but I'm just not really... Uh, it's so boring. Even if they haven't had this palette out before, the fact that I look at it and I'm like, are you sure we haven't seen this before? That's a bad sign. Because it means yeah. that, well, we kind of have seen it before. It's just you know same same but different yeah i think the di main difference between this one and the uh gingerbread ex extra spicy that came out at holiday season last year is that this one has more purples that one had um yeah sort of orangey shades and these sort of same pinky you know nudie shades but it had more of that forest green color whereas mm. this sort of has that bottom row of cool toned mauves sort of gray yeah. purples and the more deeper purples. So I think that makes it a little bit different, but it's the same sort of color story. It's very, very two-faced. We've seen this before. Yeah. And it makes me question, what are we gonna see this holiday season? This might even be a sneak peek of their holiday collection. Mm -hmm. Cause this is it very on point for what they do for their holiday releases. And it would make yeah. a lot of sense because they had their gingerbread man and gingerbread girl liquid lipsticks, but they yep. re-released those the last couple of years. And I think people will throw rocks at them if they do it again. So it makes sense oh, yeah. if they take um, the, a different spin on holidays and lean towards the more fall element rather than the more Christmassy element. I yeah, mm. It wouldn't surprise me if this is just a sneak peek for what's to come in their masses of holiday releases they release later on in the year. I just feel like if they are releasing like the same themed stuff year after year, like there's absolutely no excuse for that because there's so much shit you can do with holiday themed stuff. Like they're just they're stuck in this like fucking circle jerk of the same same shit every year that's because that's it boring. sells yeah that's a problem people buy it sad yeah well i didn't i didn't oh no i did well i've got extra spicy so obviously i purchased it no you've got the but, gingerbread spice not the extra spicy uh, no sorry gingerbread spice that's right and that was the previous year wasn't yeah, it so that 2018. was 2018 yeah okay well there we go i showed some restraint last year yeah because i remember, we, remember at the shops I together. we went to the shop yeah. together and we we're swatching <laughs> and we're like it's nice would i use it nah no and we skipped it yeah we skipped but it we, yeah but we did swatch it we did we did it. we did and, and i would probably sw swatch this one too if we're allowed to. They won't yeah. let you swatch anything when shops are open here. We're not even allowed to access shops right now, so, you know. No, no, we're not. The time has come to dedicate this episode to a Beauty News VIP, and this week's VIP is Angie. Thank you, Angie, for thank supporting you, Angie. Beauty News, and thank you to everyone who supports Beauty News in whichever way you choose to do so. Kat, what is our emoji for the week? A pie. So we're going pies because Too Faced had pies on the lip product, even though it was pumpkin yeah. spice. Pies. We're going pies. pies. Delicious. Yum. Mm. Delicious. I'm hungry. I'm hungry too. I'm like going to make tacos for dinner. I don't know what I'm making, but I'm going to figure <laughs> that out after this.
I'm gonna go inside and I'm gonna go, Mum, come and help me make dinner. She's gonna go, oh, do I have to? I'm gonna go, yes. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for us today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. See ya.